I think um, I think everybody has a defining moment in their lives, and um, some people, it, you know, it's it's when they f when they become an astronaut and they land on the moon, like Neil. It's, it's like when they win the Tour de France. And then they use steroids, you know, like Lance. So when they become president, um, and then you know, some people, it's it's when uh, they have to wash their their jacket. I was gonna do that bit for like the whole time, but it's very slow and exhausting. But hey, what's up, guys? Today's the day. The sugarcane type two, 1953 extended or modified edition from Self Edge raw. What a mouthful. Pretty sweet jacket though. So two things right off the bat. One, I think for a while, and maybe still, Sugarcane is a Levi's reproduction brand where they make their own denim and then after they made their own denim for a while they started to make their own garments too and they basically reproduced Levi's old stuff for a while. So the Type 2 is the older predecessor to the Type 3 jacket which, you know, boom boom. And then originally there was the Type 1 with the little belt in the back and stuff like that. I don't really know if I like the Type 1 that much. I really like the Type 2 slowly getting into the Type 3 again. I think it's just because the Type 2 was new for me. I had a lot of Type 3s before that. But anyways, I don't really know how I feel about reproduction brands and stuff like that. I mean, I like them now. Like, I really like this jacket and Levi's doesn't have, even Levi's Vintage doesn't have like a raw selvage Type 2, which would be really cool. So anyways, this being like a vintage reproduction, you'll see it's kind of cut vintage style. It's not like a TCB Type 2 jacket, which is very slim and like a modern take on it. This is a roomy jacket. And really, one of the best things about that is that I can layer anything under this. I really don't know if there's anything I can't put on under this, which is great because I'll wear it deep, deep into the winter with a super thick sweatshirt on under it. And I don't really look that weird. I can layer a lot of sweatshirts under a lot of my denim jackets, but what happens is I end up looking like puffy and kind of dumb. This gives you enough room where it looks more intentional. It was on Sanfrai, so when I first got it, it was massive. And you can see in these pictures that I thought I bought the wrong size. And then I soaked it, put it on, and it fits really well. Like I said, it's relaxed, but fits great. The denim of this jacket is really nice. It's nothing crazy. It's not super slubby. There's really no nep to it at all, but as I wear it, I'm seeing a little bit of a slub develop everywhere, which is nice. And this is a very hairy denim, which I actually recently found out is how most denim is, but a lot of companies singe off the hair, so it's, it's very smooth and uniform and stuff like that, which I don't know why they do that. I really like that it's hairy, but I guess it does look really linty, and as you wear it, the hair kind of gets matted down, so it looks a little weird, but it's not anything long. It just looks like lint. No one's ever said anything about that to me before, but um, if it really bothers you, you can just burn your jacket. The other thing about this denim is that it's extremely slow fading, which I'm not sure, but I think that means Basically, it's just dyed very deep. Also, sir, I haven't shaved or gotten a haircut in a super long time because there's a pandemic going on, so taking a little break from hygiene. I haven't even brushed my teeth since, like, May. I've had 316s, Tanyukis, Tanyukis, Tanyukis? I actually never had to say it out loud. Oni's and Tanyukis fade insanely fast. Tanyukis fade, literally, I wore it for a day and I already had some fades going on in my arms. That's, like, too fast. I think there's a nice balance between way too slow and way too fast and like to me that's like kind of 316 they're a little on the fast side and then this jacket is kind of on the really really slow side so I've probably worn this jacket for six or seven months every single day probably like 15 hours a day literally from when I wake up till when I go to bed I just put the jacket on people have identified me as the guy that just wears the same jacket every day just because I really wanted to get it to look like this but you know um, that's just that's a lot of wear and that person washed it twice so I'm gonna wash mine too for a while I really didn't want to wash my denim and I thought you know it'd be really cool to get the contrast but as I started to look at more and more and more pairs of you know raw denim pants and jackets and stuff I realized that I like really strong contrast fades but there's definitely a limit where you look at that and you say oh that's really cool that's faded really nicely or you're like that's gross and grubby and the denim looks stiff and like held up by dirt so anyways some more details that I just want to go over on this jacket that I think are really cool one the patch is a deer skin patch which seems honestly pretty standard for a lot of denim jackets it's like a very soft very nice feeling leather it's not intrusive or anything it's not like that thick you know stiff stiff leather it's very flexible the buttons are actually made of iron which is really cool so they'll patina over time mine haven't really done anything yet but uh, if you look at you know this version the buttons on that are really really cool 
This is a 14.25 ounce denim jacket, so it's medium weight. It's definitely not heavy. 16, 17, 18, that kind of gets the heavy territory. 20 and up is obviously heavy, and then like 13, 12. I think 12 is Levi's, so regular Levi's jacket. And then below that, you're in like summer weight denim, which is, you know, that's boring. That's foo foo shit. Another thing that I really like about this jacket, but is actually beat out by the Taylor Stitch long haul jacket, is that uh, the cuffs here, you'll see that uh, it's bar tacked, I think is what it's called. Basically, you know, it opens up. If it was just stitched, it would rip really easily. So they do a little bar tack here, but they also reinforce it by putting a rivet there. I'll probably never break through the bar tack. I don't know what I'd be doing that I just have to like push through something that hard, but still cool to see that extra detail. And where Taylor Stitch beats them out actually is um, they have two rivets at like the corners of these pockets, which you'll see right here is bar tacked. But they have rivets there just for some extra peace of mind. And I don't know, I always think that's really cool. This jacket is also dual tone stitched, which again was on old Levi's jackets. Not really sure about the new ones, but uh, you'll see there's a yellow thread and then a darker orange thread. This is, you know, standard denim thread color. But what is different is that these threads are cotton, not polyester. Most threads now are polyester just because polyester is tougher. It's kind of one of those things on a jacket or jeans where it's like, all right, well, you know, I'll let that be polyester because it'll last longer. But now when a denim maker chooses to use cotton threads, it's kind of adding to the patina of the jacket itself because those threads disintegrate a lot faster and get a lot more wear than polyester threads. So you can really, really see it on uh, my sleeves. The threads are actually getting ripped up, which um, it's not the worst thing in the world. I think I actually would have liked polyester just because, I don't know, repairing seams sometimes. It's like, I like patina and authenticity and stuff, but if it's gonna start to wear down a lot faster, then I'm like, oh, okay, maybe you could do that. But I actually didn't even know that until I reread the description that these are cotton threads, so still cool. So as far as I know right now, if you don't get this jacket through self-edge, it's gonna be one wash, and I don't think it's modified length either, so it's one washed and shorter. So self-edge is kind of the place you wanna go for this if you want anything kind of flexible. Definitely a lot more modern if you add that length in. Another thing about this jacket, and this will kind of be the last thing before we get into actually washing this jacket today, but uh, there is chain stitching all over this jacket, and it gives it a really nice pucker around everything, but this thing has chain stitching everywhere. So that's pretty cool. And lastly, two things. One, for some reason, I think maybe it's because the Type 2. I'm not really sure. Also maybe because it's very hairy and it was very like rigid and dark, but this is my, mo well also because I probably wear it the most, but this is my most complimented jacket by far. I was sitting at a Jiffy Lube one day getting a quick tune up and this girl like elbowed her boyfriend and she was like, that's a nice jacket. And I was like, <laughs> You mean the Sugar Cane 1953 modified length from Self Edge raw denim jacket with a deerskin patch, chain stitching throughout, dual tone cotton threads, iron buttons, and a sex god in it? <laughs> you like that jacket? That's the one you like? I don't know. I love getting compliments. I always want more, but... Okay, so anyways, last thing is uh, this jacket, being a 1953 Levi's reproduction, doesn't have side pockets, which shoot me in the face. It doesn't have hand warmer pockets. It drives me, actually it doesn't drive me that nuts anymore. I got used to putting my hands in my pockets and stuff, but my girlfriend, I swear to God, every time I can't hold something for her because I don't have pockets. I think that's the point of dating me. I'm just always like, I'm sorry, I don't have the room. The donkey is full, so. That sucks. And one time she was buying soup and she was talking to this woman and she had her phone and her keys and she was wearing my jacket and she did this thing. Like she was trying to put the stuff in the pocket and then she got like stressed and tried to do it faster and I didn't know how to like tell her there was no pocket. So she was talking to the soup lady while going like this. Like really rapidly and uh, it, was, it was really embarrassing for me. So, that sucks. These pockets are a pretty good size though. On the Tanyuki I have, they're like cut up to here, so they're tiny. These I can fit most stuff in. I have a, I have a knife my ex-girlfriend gave me, or she tried to stab me with it. I can't really figure out which one it was. Um, and then I have my Taylor Stitch wallet. I should really give you guys my banking info. So yeah, anyways, this is a faithful reproduction of a Levi's Type 2, so if that's kind of what you're in the market for, I think sugarcane is really one of the best. I mean, there's a bunch of others, but sugarcane comes in at super affordable compared to the others. Ages really well as I wear it more and more. Like I said, the slub comes out. I would say it's probably the most hybridized 
reproduction jacket you can get that's still a little bit more heavy-handed on it being a faithful reproduction. You know, there's TCB and stuff like that, but like I said, they slim those down till it's really like a shirt. You're like wearing a shirt jacket. Okay, so anyways, the fun part of this video is that today, oh, real quick, before we get into this, before we get into washing this jacket, you should definitely subscribe and tell your friends. Anyway, so this is an exciting day because I haven't washed this jacket in seven months and it's very, uh, it's like shiny and greasy and kind of gross and it got to the point where I didn't really want to put it on because it felt kind of weird, like kind of gross. Okay, the other thing was I was reading about sugarcane and it's just such a cool brand. There's a lot of stuff on sugarcane, but this is this is a cool thing. The denim making process began with a meticulously thorough analysis of all denim goods from the late 19th century to the 1960s. Each element in the production of vintage denim had to be completely dissected and learned. Yarns, dyes, weaving, construction style, fit and technique, hardware and other components. Lab analysis of the denim and related yarns was part of the learning process, but this alone cannot yield the sort of perfection sugarcane sought. Hands-on experimentation with vintage shuttle looms, both power looms and wooden, manually operated shuttle looms was important as any results from lab analysis of fabric. The looms that were obtained were very old and had fallen into various states of disrepair, so many hours and large sums of money were expended to get the machines into proper running conditions. Then even more time and money was spent learning how to operate the machines to produce the perfect vintage style denim we see more routinely available in Japan today. The correct yarns are also very important in making perfect vintage style selvage denim, as is the proper selection, blending, spinning, and dyeing of cotton over the course of many years. Sugarcane was finally able to see success in their development of perfect vintage style denim that looks rough and uneven on the surface with warp yarns that are correctly faded like vintage specimens. Once the denim was perfected, the search was on for sewing shops and factories that still had access to old sewing machines. The sugarcane philosophy maintained that truly authentic vintage style selvage denim dungarees can only be revived by the exact same processes and by using the exact same types of machines that produce the original vintage goods. Sugarcane is a brand owned by Japan's Toyo Enterprises LTD and the theme is vintage inspired iconic American workwear from the first half of the 20th century. The aficionados in Japan refer to this period of American greatness as the good old days. It took Sugarcane 20 years of hard work and research in order to create their own selvage denim dungarees as perfectly as the great classics that spawn their inspiration. Okay, quick conspiracy theory or stitching pattern or something like that. I don't know what it is, but I noticed that everybody... Sorry, I'm so bright right now. Wow, this is incredible. I'll just go back like this. What I noticed is that everybody's jacket, everyone that has a sugarcane jacket for some reason, the pockets, this pocket curls up like this, and then this part of the collar, which is why I have this pin on it, pops up like this. Every sugarcane jacket I've seen does the same thing like that. I have no idea why. Anyway, so I washed the jacket. A lot of things changed since then. I got a new apartment, which is looking good. Uh, oh, look, you can see, um, I got these two bandanas from, uh, Blue Owl. Okay, so some things that I noticed. This was actually the first piece of raw denim that I washed. Actually, no. My Levi 501s were the first piece of raw denim I ever washed. Things I noticed. This one came unsamphorized. I soaked it. And then, uh, like an idiot, I, I just really wanted to wash it on full heat for some reason and dry it. I don't know why I did that. Everything says don't do that. They say put it on cold, air dry. And I just got a, I just got an attitude out of nowhere and was like, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wash it on hot and dry it on hot. So it definitely shrank a little bit. I'll stand up and show you, but definitely shrank. But the colors really do pop a lot more. This is, a, like I said, a really slow fader, but the colors definitely pop. I have some nice uh, arm honeycombs. It's faded on like the bottom of my arms most, obviously because I wear this at a desk when I'm at work. Um, but you know, it popped. It lightened the smallest amount, you know, in color because it lost indigo everywhere, but definitely softer. My girlfriend actually likes this one now. A lot of slub characteristics came out and you could see there is, um, there, there's not a lot. It's like a really light amount of um, slub showing through, but it does give some nice vertical fades, which adds a lot of character. I don't know, I just think the jacket, it, uh, you should definitely wash your denim because it just, it took on a, a much different life. It's not anything crazy to anyone outside of it. It's a lot more vibrant. There's some really dark, dark parts of the denim still. There's some lighter parts. It, it just looks a lot more dynamic. It's not as flat. And it got rid of the starch, so it's not super like 
crunchy and stiff and weird feeling, but it's still kind of, it still feels substantial. It's definitely not like really, really relaxed. Okay, so anyways, I have like 20 seconds left on this memory card, but uh, yeah, if you like this video, definitely toss me a subscribe, check out my other videos, and I'll do another one sooner. I won't take a month in between videos anymore.